Hola! So, I'm at work. I had yesterday off. And I get in the middle of the day, and they're not ready. I guess they're behind. I don't know. So I figured that while I'm sitting here, I'll talk about my time in two food service companies and why I think food service is a load of crap for the drivers because I don't mind hard work but food service is like unfairly hard for no reason <laughs> Snapple Kiwi Strawberry is actually pretty good hmm. alright a tangent real quick here in Utah we have um, a chicken place it's kind of like KFC KFC actually started in Utah too but we have a place called Crack Shack here in Utah and I stopped there on the way to work today and now I'm really sleepy and tired because the food was super good and if you know if you've had good southern cooking or fried chicken type stuff you get the itis anybody ever seen boondocks and the itis <laughs> makes you want to go to sleep so I I need a monster. Back to what I was talking about. Um, I guess I got about 20 minutes before my, my load will be ready here. Um, so food service. I worked for Cisco um, in, what year was that? I think it was 2021. Yeah, 2021. Um, and I, I worked there for, well, I think it was almost a year. Um, and at the time, I think they were paying around 80 k a year. Um, but, like, it's good money. Come here, Jack. I don't know who that is. So it's good money. But, Come here, Jake. Um. Come here, Jake. No, this is distracting me. I need you guys to shut up. I'm sorry. <laughs> All right. Um. So with food service, for the most part, I think most of them do it this way, is you don't get paid by the mile, uh, but you kind of also, you get paid by the hour, um, but then you also get paid based on the amount of cases on your trailer, which say you'll probably have like, on a hard, a heavy day, you'll have a thousand cases, which means a thousand pieces of things that you will individually touch, each one of them, and pull them off that truck and deliver it. God, shut up. Um, all right, y'all getting on my nerves. Talk too much. Um, and they also pay you based on your performance, meaning how fast you get this done. <clears throat> and that's how you're supposedly making 80 grand a year is if you're efficient and quick, then you make better money. I'm telling you right now, they will load that trailer in such a way every single day that you will never ever hit that incident bonus not once and i'm a i'm a pretty fast guy i'm super fast when i'm working um i'll get to that in a minute <laughs> but uh it pretty much just comes down to you're getting paid by the hour and you'll get overtime most of the time uh, but it's long to, it's so with cisco i have nothing against cisco it's the work that sucked and part of that was there was two reasons that the work at cisco i think sucked was it was 21 2021 and uh you know 2020 was a pandemic and it was all starting to wind down so where i worked out there in pennsylvania we delivered to schools hospitals all these little mom and pop restaurants and even some big restaurants um like chain restaurants that are around pennsylvania and stuff um so all those places were starting to open back up, which meant they were ordering way more stuff than normal. Let me tell you, <laughs> that was tough. That was tough. Um, so, you know, whereas, you know, you might have like one or two hard days in food service or delivering, every day was hard. And everybody at Cisco that had been there for like 10 years were like, this is insane. We're not used to this much volume. And everybody's overworked. There was way too many stops on the trucks. And the routes were humongous. They were huge. So, Cisco had to actually get in outside help. Like, outside contractors. They started hiring people just to ride with the drivers. To help deliver this stuff. So that we could get it done. Because it, they literally had the routes so big. 
that you couldn't possibly do it in one day. There was no way it was happening. So they had to hire help. Um, and that's how I knew I was like one of the faster ones because all the hired help would have wanted to work with me because I was quick and efficient and we would get done pretty quick. I liked the days that we got help. Those were good. But some days they just didn't have enough of the help and you had to do, uh, okay, so a big route in food service is say a thousand cases and like 10 or 12 stops. If those stops are spread out, it's gonna be a long day. It's gonna be a long day because you gotta calculate in each stop is about, I would say between 30 to 45 minutes for each stop. That's not counting driving for most stops, 30 to 45 minutes for each stop. So you're, you're talking, you know, 15 stops. I don't want to do a bunch of math, but a lot of times it came out to at least over 12 hours each day and 12 or a hundred thousand cases was a lot of work. You're humping all of this down uh, off of a lift gate. Some places you could just drop entire pallets. That was fine. You pull a whole pallet off. We had powered uh, pallet jacks, pull the whole pallet off, drop it, say goodbye. Good, easy money. But a lot of those places were small and you had to get in there and get parked and get, you know, get through traffic and drive. And then you get in there and here was the second issue. I was in Pennsylvania. Everywhere in Pennsylvania is old and everywhere in Pennsylvania has a freaking basement. So you're huffing, I mean, 50 pound cases of potatoes, 50 pound, pound uh, cases of rice or, or uh, like chicken or just salt. Salt bag was really heavy. Uh, I mean, it's just heavy, heavy stuff. And you're going up and down stairs with this stuff. Not one at a time, like five or six at a time on a dolly, which is dangerous. And it is hell on your back and knees. I'm telling you, it sucks. So if you're in the Northeast thinking about food service, hell no, don't, I'm t just don't. <laughs> Unless you're desperate, don't. You, it will ruin your back and your knees. And I did it for about a year and it sucked. Um, it was just hellacious the entire time absolutely insane um <clears throat> there was one day where they piled on 18 stops 18 stops um for most of these places i'd never been to so that's going to take a little bit longer and um it was a two hour drive just to get to my first stop and then the route just went even further and further as it went and i'm like probably two stops in the, this day and it's already tough and they loaded the trailer really stupid i don't like the loaders Whoever's in charge of building these pallets, they don't care about the drivers. They just put this stuff on there in a semi-organized fashion, but you're gonna dig through these pallets. And when you don't have room in the trailer, there's nowhere to put stuff when you're pulling it off the top of the pallet. So you're putting it on top of other stuff and digging for more stuff. And it just gets super unorganized and it slows you down. There's no way to fix it until you empty some of that trailer out and you can actually kind of organize things as you go. So I'm like two stops in on this day and I'm like 18 stops on this on the, the chart and I'm like dude I call in I'm like there's no way that I'm getting all this done I can't like I'm already six hours in and I still got 16 stops and all this driving left there's no way this is happening nothing they didn't care they were just like hey get what you can do of course I ran out of time um, I ran out of time at like stop 11 <laughs> that's how big these stops were and how far away they were and I ran out of time and I was like, I don't, I have to drive back now because it's like three hours away to drive back. If I drive back now, I'm going to run out of time. And I'm talking about the 16 hour exception clock. So I was coming up on 16 hours. They said, no, stay there. We're sending somebody out to help you. So like the guy that ran the entire terminal where we were at comes out to help and helps me deliver the rest of the stops. Okay, cool. I see what you're, you're doing. You're helping the driver, except I worked 20 hours that day. 20 hours. That's not okay. I don't care what anybody says. That's insane. That's crazy. So I got home at like two o'clock in the morning after uh, starting work at uh, literally all, like four in the morning the day before. Like I was just blasted. So done. Somebody's here. I gotta give them the radio. But yeah. Um, now. Actually, I gotta give somebody ready here real quick. I'm yeah. waiting. <laughs> but yeah, um, after that, 
it was probably another like month or two um and i was working so much and so hard that i hurt my ankle just i just hurt it couldn't even walk for like two days um and then i hurt my back right after that and i was like you know what i don't think i'm cut out for this <laughs> i i told him i quit i had to quit I mean, i'm like i was heading headlong into like a really bad injury probably and i just didn't want to do that <clears throat> so i left cisco and when i left cisco uh directly after that is when i got into food liner which is what i'm doing now i'm not with food liner because i had to they, i explained that on the last video they didn't have room for me here up in utah but um I worked for Food Liner uh, until I got here to Utah. And you know, that whole thing fell through because they just couldn't get a lane for me. So I ended up working here for PFG. Now, PFG I got a lot of gripes with, the actual company, not just the work. The work actually wasn't that bad with PFG because here in Utah, we don't have all those basements. Uh, the traffic wasn't as bad. Uh, and I was only delivering to big places like Wingstops and Blaze Pizza and, and those pizza places, basically. So, you know, you, flour bags are heavy. Potatoes were heavy. Uh, and cases of chicken. It's all heavy stuff, but it usually wasn't bad. I wasn't going up and down hills and steps and all that stuff. So the work, I had no problem with. It was the company and the way it was being managed because PFG was based out of Denver. And I was completely lied to when I, I applied for this job through a place called Mile High Energy. And I thought that was the company I was going to. And they told me one kind of job. And I was like, okay, cool. Then they got me in touch with uh, actual PFG and they told me this is PFG. I'm like, well, this is food service, isn't it? And they're like, yeah. And I'm like, okay, well, I was with Cisco and I quit that job because it was tearing me up, man. So I asked a bunch of questions. I'm like, how long are your routes? They said they're about 10 hours a day. I'm like, oh, okay, that's not bad. Are you sure? Yeah, 10 hours a day. Here in Denver, 10 hours a day. And uh, they're in Utah, they're 10 hours a day. I'm like, Okay, how many stops do you have? No more than 10. 10 stops, 10 hours. I can do that, no problem. And uh, so it was actually a four day work week, which is great, I really like that. So the first day we would leave here in Salt Lake City, we would go to Wyoming, pick up a trailer, hit a couple stops on the way back, be done for that day. Easy day, right? Next day you just deliver the rest of your stops and then you're off the next day. And then you just do that same thing the next two days and then you're off on the weekend. That was a good schedule, really good schedule. They didn't lie to me about that. That was the schedule. The problem is they lied to me about how many stops it was, how long those routes were. Um, and I never, maybe one week, I got a four day work week. It was six days every other week, six days. Because once I got on there, they piled the stops on and they piled the time on. They were literally scheduling out 17 hour days. Uh, and it was just me, there was no help. You can't schedule a 17 hour day, man. That's illegal, I literally can't work that. What are you doing? And I complained about it over and over. Um, but yeah, I was doing the stops. They had some of this stuff set up to where I was literally going from like Northern Utah down to Southern Utah in one day and coming back around. It was impossible to do that work. And there were times where they would call me and say, hey, can you make it to this stop today? And I'm like, no, I can't. I've been running nonstop. There's no way I can make it to this stop unless I skip these next two stops and I can get there in time. Then, then they, for some reason, moved everything up a day. So they changed everybody's delivery schedules, which pissed off all the customers. And nobody was mad at me about it, but management for some reason was acting like it was my fault the customers were mad because now we were delivering on Saturday instead of Fridays. And I'm like, well, they, it's a pizza place. They need their stuff on Fridays and you moved it to Saturday for some reason. Make it freaking Thursday or Friday working, working again instead of like moving it down to Saturdays. They just wouldn't do it. And their equipment was trash. PFG's equipment sucked. Their trucks were rented uh, from Penske. And uh, anytime. Does he have your info already? Nope. <laughs> uh, anytime those trucks were like break down we'd have to call Penske to get, come fix them I kid you not every single time I went to Wyoming to pick up a trailer I would have nails in my tires in the trailers and there would you know I would typically keep things okay on the truck but the trailers were trash 
the lift gates were always broken. The uh, the side door for the freezer. If you've ever done food service, you know you can open the side door for the freezer, and there's a ladder you can pull out and get down and walk up into the freezer. No ladders. No ladders. How am I supposed to get into the freezer, PFG? Stupid. So I complained about that multiple times. The tire, the nails in the tires. Look, I gotta leave Wyoming and come into Salt Lake City. I'm going through canyons. If a tire blows, I might die. I complained about that multiple times. So it got to a point where I was like, look, I'm gonna refuse to work if you keep sending me this crap. And I was, I'm a man of my word. They sent me a, a trailer one day with six tires. Six tires had nails in them. I'm like, what are you doing? Are you driving through a nail factory with this stupid trailer? Are you crazy? So I was told, I was like, I'm not leaving. <coughs> I'm not leaving Wyoming until somebody comes to fix every one of these tires. Because prior to that, two weeks in a row, I had blowouts leaving Wyoming in the middle of nowhere and I sat there all day, all day. So I was at the truck stop. I said, you come fix this stuff right now. I'm not leaving. So eight hours later, they fixed my stuff. Then PFG comes and yells at me <laughs> about why are you late to all your deliveries? I'm like, because you sent me a fucked up trailer with a bunch of nails in it. What do you think? But I'm communicating to you, but nobody's asking me what's going on. I'm telling you what's happening. And everybody's expecting me to be some kind of Superman or drive unsafely to the point that I could die. You're out of your mind, PFG. You're crazy. So, after all of this, their reefers also sucked. Half the time, the reefers barely worked. And they wouldn't restart unless you screwed with them for like an hour straight. <laughs> so, <clears throat> we had this one issue where I couldn't make it to a Whole Foods to deliver their little bit of stuff. Because um, it was just too late. Like, after 2 o'clock in the afternoon, they closed off receiving. You can't deliver. That was the day that all my tires were had nails in them. So, I got all that fixed. I couldn't deliver to Whole Foods. <clears throat> and then Whole Foods is like way out of the way of the rest of my route. So, I got the rest of my route done the next day couldn't get to Whole Foods. I was like, I'll go to Whole Foods on Saturday. They said, no, Whole Foods canceled. You'll send all that stuff back. We'll, we'll just send another order out. Okay, fine. So I'm off that weekend, Saturday and Sunday. I'm off, right? I go back on Monday. Guess what? Their reefer had stopped working over the weekend. It's not my duty to go and check on this reefer on my time off. <clears throat> it is the company's duty to fix the reefer after I've said fix the reefer three or four times. They never did it. It cut off all that food for Whole Foods had spoiled and gone bad because it's the middle of the summer. Um, <clears throat> so I sent that back and they asked a couple questions. I'm like, this is what happened. I told you to fix the reefer. Nobody fixed it. I told you to fix the tires. Nobody fixed the tires. I had to get all that fixed. I missed that stop because of all that stuff. And then all your crap died or went, was spoiled in the, fr in the, the trailer because you didn't fix your stuff. And also, if you send me another trailer without a ladder in it, because you've literally specifically sent out a message to everyone saying that if the trailer doesn't have a ladder in it, it's supposed to be done in a pre-trip in Denver before they leave the yard, before they get to us in, in Salt Lake. If it doesn't have a ladder, it's not supposed to go out. I kept getting a trailer without a ladder. I said, I'm not gonna do it, I'm not gonna work. If you send me that again, I'm gonna drop that trailer right there, I'm driving back to Salt Lake City, and I'm not gonna work. I'm tired of it. And I'll, I basically laid down the law. I was like, this is stupid. You're causing issues. You're causing all these issues. And you're trying to act like it's my fault. What did they do when I come back? I go out at 4 o'clock in the morning. I go out there to work. They sent some dude from Denver. They had him drive all the way up from Denver to give me a slip that says you're suspended for letting food spoil because the reefer. They tried to say I didn't turn the reefer on. I'm like, the reefer was on. It cut off. Full of fuel. It cut off because you're stupid and didn't fix your stuff. They said, well, this is an indefinite suspension. I was like, no, it's not. This is me quitting hey, right now. Driver, you got a copy? That's me quitting right now. So I quit 50. Hey, Vampex 9 driver. Yeah, I'm here. We need your information, buddy. <clears throat> it's a truck 1128, trailer 295, and watch date 113. Thank you. <clears throat> so... Yeah, I quit PFG, like, on the spot. I was like, you're not going to try to pin all that on me, and, like, customers are mad because I'm late because you can't get your equipment right. That was the problem with PFG. So those are the two food services that I work for. I, Cisco's okay to work for. If you don't mind doing that kind of work, I wouldn't suggest it up in the Northeast. But out West, it's probably not that bad. Um, but PFG, I, no. Nobody should be working for them. They're asinine 
just just dumb, horrible communicators. Uh, and that, I mean, that's for Denver. Sorry, I, if you if you treat me like crap, I'm gonna talk crap about you. I don't care. Um, <clears throat> but yeah, that's my experience with food service. Um, and from what I've heard, it's all it's all kind of like that. It's all just a lot of freaking work. And it's kind of unfair amount of work to the drivers, and they expect you to do way more than you actually physically can. So that's my problem with all of it. Um, I'll never do it again. There's no way. I don't care how much you pay me. I'm not doing a food service again. But yeah, that's my little rant about food service. Um, yeah. They're going to load me now. Perfect timing. Y'all have a good one.